Okay, six oh six. We're going to start this uh, board of selectmen meeting early. The first session, we're going to talk about a budget strategy. We're, again, we're a few minutes behind. We're just trying to get our act together, getting through the fog tonight. All right, this is a for me. This is the first time where I'm entering the budget process from the <coughs> beginning. Last year was at the end, so this is new to me. And so I'm going to ask Bob, who's been here before, to help me out here. Dave has been on more, probably sitting in on more budget sessions than I have. Yeah. So um, this is, as I said, new, so bear with me. We're going to put out some general points, and uh, my, my fellow segment can augment me as we go forward. But these are some general tenets we want to follow as we enter into the budget season. The first thing I'd like to just point out, we're, we're shooting for level services, which is different from a level budget. We're going to keep services approximately the same, but budget will change. The services obviously will cost more. I want everyone to look at warrants. I want you to review any capital improvement funds that are within your department. Look at them seriously. Do they need to go up, go down, stay the same, or don't ask for any warrant improvements or a collection from the, from the taxpayers? And be prepared early to get new warrants, not related to uh, no new warrants going forward. Prepare them early so we can give input from the board of selectmen. Because as warrants go forward, we have we basically will vote on them to uh, whether we recommend them or not. Pay raises this year. We're recommending a two percent pay raise for employees across the board. And I think the Board of Selectmen were not um, highly recommending increases for elected positions at this point. I'm appointed. Appointed? Uh, I'm sorry, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> we're all in the same category. Okay. Elected. Now this is a, this is a change. Um, we have some credit cards in town. If you use a credit card, we have a cutoff date. I mean, I'm going to implement a cutoff date of December 10th. No more credit card purchases after December 10th. There will be exceptions to the policy, though. The exceptions will have to be run by the town administrator. These exceptions will be for limited for truly essential requirements to keep the operating services going. What I don't want to see is frivolous spending on December 9th running up your bills to buy paper or, or things for the next year. That's not the way we budget things. So keep you keep your expenses and know that you got three more weeks of December and that's it. So plan appropriately. We're going to scrutinize the bills and see how well the you as supervisors and department chiefs how well you're managing. So I don't want to again December 9th don't surprise me okay. But it's uh, after December 10th if, if there's a problem in your department where you do have to commit money just run it by the town administrator. And we're not putting a moratorium on spending. What we're, what we're trying to do is just close out the books, because last year it took too long into the following calendar year to close out the books. And that's the reasoning for this implementation of cutoff date. Now, if you do commit monies after December 10th for any commitments, like say something goes wrong and it's December 29th and you commit, you need something repaired, heat goes down, you, you have a, a flat tires and you lose four tires with spike, spike strips, for example, uh, they were pl placed down by Goffstown, not you guys. <laughs> but if anything happens like that and you need to spend money, we need to get an invoice within 24 hours, if possible, if, or if as soon as possible, just an invoice, a copy of the commitment of the money you're spending so we can close out the books. Okay? Now, as we prepare budgets for, for the following year, I want, I want everyone to pay attention to critical infrastructure repairs to buildings, equipment, anything that you know for 2018 is going to be critical to your operation for continuing services. And those things I want to identify up front that, you, in other words, you need the money. If we, if we don't get the money to fund this repair, equipment purchase, whatever, it's going to impact services negatively. That has to be identified early on. And then secondary, I want you to also identify those non-critical uh, repairs, equipment purchase that you want. Uh, we're going to look at that too. We want to fund appropriate things as we go forward.
Okay, so that's given the flavor of where we're going. I'm going to say, did I miss anything? I'm going to ask my colleagues here. Help me out here. I don't think so. Okay. No, I was surprised that you didn't find anything on the back of that sheet. <laughs> okay, <so> look. <laughs> All right, any questions on just those general tenants from any, any department? Any, anyone? Go ahead, Linda. Uh, on the pay increases, you said no increase for the elected. Because of my situation with the town, how do I fall into that category? I have not addressed that, so I don't know. I think we'll, I think, uh, we'll, we'll entertain that. But good question. Thank you. You would think of more. <coughs> more too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a recommendation that is subject to change. I'm not putting that hard. No concrete tonight. No questions. So I guess my question is, what's the, the general flavor? I mean, I know you get you know different types of budgets. You know, level services, level funded. Not so level funded. Level services. Oh, you're going to go to level services. Right. And the difference is, for the record, as I get slapped around today earlier, I, I used the term level uh, funding. That means if things go up, you have to cut services. Correct. We are not cutting services. That, at least that's your general flavor. We want to uh, keep services at least the same. And that we know that's going to do whatever. It's going to we see some increases, and we expect to see some increases in budget lines. We've done for the last three years. Thing is, and you all probably have more experience with this preparing budgets than I do. So just again, I was on the tail end last year, so. Uh, We'll have a fun process as we go through this uh, this end of the year and budgeting season. Okay. Gee, I was expecting questions. Which department are we starting? It looks like the police department's here in full force. Well, this is just an information meeting. We're gonna, what we're going to want to do is, uh, I think, similar to the last year's uh, format, every department will, you have appropriate time to come in and prepare, and then we'll call. You get an advance mm -hmm. notice of a, a couple weeks. To, it will be on schedule and we'll review each department by department. Lena, is that the proper procedure? Yep. Okay. So um, I'm going to hand out a total budget report in the prepared for 2018, which includes all your accounts. You'll see in the next day or so just your, your category to your department in your inbox, but also including the uh, capital reserve fund and what's available in your. Um, Trust funds and whatnot for your capital improvements. So if you look at that and you feel that you're on target for your future projects, whether it's reval or um, fire truck, then this tool will be what you want to determine whether you have the opportunity to um, request a, a level warrant for your project or ask the board and discuss it for an increase or you decide as a board or a department that you are willing to decrease that warrant because every warrant that we put over and above our budget is going to be an impact to our taxes. So everyone will have... And for the record, I've been to too many town meetings where we ask, I, I see the, uh, whatever, whatever board's there, the voter will stand up and try to decrease, slash the heck out of it. Why do we have to have so many dollars? So make it reasonable. <laughs> Uh, well, reasonable, no, reasonable first, but defendable is important too. <laughs> I think the past one was justifiable. Justifiable, yeah. Because, I don't know, I, I have not seen one year go by when someone has tried, can we get by with maybe 15,000? Can we get down to 8,000 this year? Every year I've seen that. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, uh, the voters like when they, someone stands up and does that. I think the voters will enjoy that. And sometimes it doesn't make sense with the your your trust uh, capital improvements budget. Oh, don't tempt me. Yeah, yeah I just like to get a uh, if you sign in with a list, Lena, I want to pass the list around. We have some department heads not here tonight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Are we videoing that? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Correct. We're in live. Just department heads, Jim. Yeah. Lean that's on. <laughs> this yeah. quarter is, yes. Okay, any more handouts? Um, I'm just going to hand out what I have. The trust fund balances, the expense report. It did not run 
the revenues, um, I did take a look at them. We're right on the mark, less, about less than 16% uh, outstanding. I have not entered the meals and rooms tax, which is 133000 mm -hmm. because I don't typically post it until I see it at the bank, and that typically is in November or December. So I could enter it as a placeholder and get an idea, but I think we're way above our, our projected revenue, so that's a, a good things based on the fact that we just set the tax rate. Um, we won't see any decrease in our surplus. We will, because we are a, um, we'll continue to uh, add through the auditing um, reporting our, our revenues through January and February that would have been created from this calendar year. We'll continue to see that increase of our um, revenues on that side at the audit. At the end of the audit. And just for the, uh, just for the, I've said this before, our reserve, as we started at the beginning of this year, our reserve was um, ridiculously small. And uh, we're not trying to take money away from every department, but again, anything is, is we, anything surplus that comes back to the, to the, um, to the board, you might say, to the town, we're going to basically build the recommended reserve for this size town as recommended by the state of New Hampshire. And that was one of our goals as we started. And we're on a good glide path so far based on our projections. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I promise this would be short. I promise to, to Chief it would be short tonight because I know you have commitment. And any other, if there's no other questions, we'll take a, a quick, uh, a couple minute adjournment. But this was just to get the budget process in your minds started, where you're going, what, what, our, what our philosophy is as we go forward, and uh, we'll go from there. I have a couple questions. Sure. For the Chief, did you ever hear anything back on your um, your grant that you were trying for? No, we just recently checked, so we haven't heard anything yet. Okay. Do we plan on hearing back before the end of the year? They, uh, back in, I think it was October, they said they were, they were doing the notice that went out said they were reviewing all the grants. Okay. And I expect to hear any day. Any day could be now or it could be February. Probably. So will that be part of your budget process this year or next year? It's uh, the, the grant may or may not impact our budget request this year. Okay. I think that's uh, all I had. Do you guys have anything of the board that you wanted to ask while you're here? Uh, no, nothing about the budget. Okay. Uh, we did want to mention that um, we, we had talked about job descriptions, mm -hmm. and uh, Chris Rumble has been working on that, and uh, we expect to have that in view for uh, positions sometime in the next couple of weeks. Okay, great. So we'll have that in hand. Any other department have, have any questions for the board? The key thing this year, let's uh, let's help out the uh, the administrative side with uh, with keeping purchases to a minimum as we go to year end, okay? Spend what you need, but don't go crazy. Just for what it's worth, one of the things that a lot of department heads do is we're very careful of what we spend most of the year. And we, we wait till the end of the year to buy a lot of things that we, we would have bought, except we want to make sure that we stay within the budget. Understood. So that that's the strategy. It's not use it or lose it. it no. It's a matter of... Let's make sure we have enough to get through the year. Understood. When the end comes. <coughs> well, you know, we'll take that into consideration. Okay. okay. But uh, I've seen things in the past where December 31st was the last day of the, the, last day of the year. It's like, it's, a, it's like let go of everything buy and go on a shopping spree. That, that's not managing your money accurately. Go okay. buy tires for vehicles that don't need them, you know, stuff like that. That's, a that's been done before. Touche. It's exactly what, that's the type of thing we want to avoid. Okay. All set. We're going to take a, like a three minute recess and we'll be adjourned and we'll continue the regular segments we have. Well, we can't start that with seven, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. I stand corrected. It will be a 27 seven minute recess. <laughs> Thirty-seven. I'm just giving no less Okay, don't rush me. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Don't worry. When you've been married as long as we have.
Mm -hmm. We've heard a lot of slang in our papers. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to go get the doors? <laughs> name it. That we discussed last week. That we're supposed to vote on benefits or the health benefits. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you have your copies? Yep. Yes. I don't copy? need my copy. I read it. Okay. I didn't too. Oh, you're going to speak to them and everything? What's that? The health benefits you were all looking at something. Yeah, and you know, it's like I was, uh, I, I don't know, I, uh, we may go with what we have and we may have to adjust the personnel plan. I'm going to talk about the first of the year and make an adjustment to the personnel plan so that, you know, uh, I'm going to talk about that. That's an idea that I was brewing, but i got to bring it up in, to everybody tonight. Okay. You were brewing something? I was. You know, I saw a TV show about. I saw a TV show was on the Space TV about uh, moonshiners. Okay, it's now being 7:01. We're going to call this uh, board of selectmen meeting to order for Thursday, November 16th. All three selectmen are here. The reporter, town administrator, is about 30 seconds out. Recording is Leo. And who's last names? Martel. Mr. Leo and Martel. I apologize. Okay, uh, this uh, we have essentially re adjourned because we started the evening off with the uh, budgetary strategy meeting and we had some of the department heads come in. Now we're going to continue into our regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen for this Thursday. Uh, old business we have started off. Motion to accept the uh, minutes on the November 9th regular meeting. Well, but I'd like to make a amendment on oh, those. Oh, wait, the second. Wait. <clears throat> I, I'll second it. Now we'll open for discussion. Uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> on uh, the new business section, um, under <clears throat> the assessor's agent for Dunbar said, if the farm plan were to proceed, the affected portion would have to come out of current use instead of it or the entire property. So I'm just going to replace it with the affected portion. So you're amending that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had any corrections? Okay. Here's the uh, corrected copy. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? I have it right here. Okay. And you're, you're changing it as? As I just read it. He's adding the words, the affected portion. That's what I mean. Instead know. of, yep, the affected. He's supplanting the word, it. it. So on page three. Then we'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes of November 8th's regular meeting as amended. It's a new motion. I second that motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'm seconding it. And this, this is uh, November 8th, you said? 9th. 9th. 9th, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, so you, you just got to do it over again. Right. Okay. Because we make the, we made an amendment to it based upon Dave's input. Okay. And Bob, you did it, and uh, who seconded that? I seconded it again. Okay. Now I'm going to call. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Dave. Okay, going to open it up to public comment. And again, I remind everyone: please state your name, and um, if you've got a comment, state your name, and uh, for the record, so we can have it. Documented, and I'll start with Linda. Good evening. Good evening. No, no comments tonight. Okay. Not yet. Sir, uh, chili supper on December fifteenth. Don, can you just uh, tickets are on. State, Stephen. Oh, uh, Don Larson. Don, uh, Footlock Farms. Uh, chili supper is December fifteenth, and it'll start at five thirty. Uh, tickets are on sale at the town office here and also at the school business office at Dunbarton Elementary and uh, on Saturday mornings from uh, 8 to noon at the transfer station. Adults are $8, seniors are 7 and children and veterans are 5 to 7 on uh, Friday, the December 15th. 
Egg and baskets. Huh? Egg and baskets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. Yes. No, I was hoping I could just wager one on gift basket again. I didn't. I didn't do so good at the school uh, fall harvest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going hoping for a second chance. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Yes. Uh, Leo, do you have anything for the group? No. Nope. Thank no, you, sir. Nothing like okay. We're going to go right into uh, uh, the health benefits review. Uh, and this is uh, where we're going to uh, be, pers what plan we're pursuing, and we have to sign because we have a deadline uh, approaching. I'm sorry. We'll use her coffee. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. And Bob, I'm going to let you take the floor. Take the floor. Well, uh, no, actually, I, you know, I looked at everything, and I'll, I'll be real honest on that. The majority of health insurances that are sold nationwide, and I wish I, like I said, I don't know what I did with the article, and I don't know if I passed it off to someone, but uh, nationwide and statewide, actually, and if you go to the insurance commissioner, I'll tell you the same thing. Most people that have health insurance have a deductible. With that being said, only because of what the cost is right now, although you're going to find, I think, if the current tax plan is passed, uh, you know, for, for your 1040s and everything, mm -hmm. they're eliminate, they, it looks like they're going to eliminate mandatory health insurance, which drives <coughs> that uh, uncompensated care costs right up in New Hampshire at one time. Like I said last week, it was a 26% of your premium was uncompensated care. Now it's down to 17%. That number's going to flip and go the other way, only because of what's being proposed. The Senate version has it in there. I think there's going to be a conference between the Senate and the House, and I, it, you know, they've been trying to make that change, and if they do, health care is going to go up in the double digits next year. So mm -hmm. somehow we're going to have to address that at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Currently, you're back to almost about where you were two years ago with your health insurance as far as the increase. So, uh, you know. Or decrease, right? Well, the, the, what we lost brought us back to what we were two, two years almost mm -hmm. about what we were two years ago. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, uh, I think I'm going to leave yeah, up to you, uh, the board to make a decision as to if you want to keep the plan the way it is. Uh, I would like to make a motion that we keep the plan as it is currently because we show a savings of $6,000 this year for over $6,000. And the plan name, is it AB20 or is it uh, 20. Medical 12 MO? AB20, which is the orange yep. column. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, do I have a second on it? I'll second it. Okay. Now we want discussion. Discussion. Well, the thing is, the, the problem with uh, healthcare these days, we don't know which direction is going. Um, I agree with Bob that the potential for an increase next year, it could just uh, kind of like screw employers over. It could screw, um, so I say, not, it could hurt employers, could hurt people who are paying to the plan. We have some employees who are grandfathered into our current plan. And we, we have an 80-20 for the, for the other, rest of the folks who are newcomers. I, I think I'd like to make a proposal, and I always, this is something to think about. I don't want any decision tonight, but a proposal is so that we need to think about it. But I'd like to make, in the future, next year it could be disaster, it could be no change in healthcare. We don't know. But future increases, I'd like to consider that cost share of any, cost share of the uh, impact of any future increases. In other words, let's say it goes up 20%. On those people who are grandfathered in, the cost increase would go up 10% 10, 10 paid by the town and 10% paid by the employee. And I've added that to the personnel plan as it would be changed to the personnel plan. In other words, it forces, it gives everyone a little skin in the game. And the thing is, I'm sure when they gave out these, uh, when they, we were grandfathered in, and no one expected uh, double digit increases in insurance. And it's a liability for the town. And the thing is, across the board in industry, there is very little, um, shall I say, free lunches as far as 100% coverage. And that's what we have now. We have a good plan right now. And the thing is, we could dumb down the plan and make people pay more as far as co-pays, but I don't think that's fair either because we look at, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on the school department. 
why should our employees have a less lesser plan than the school department? And I don't think that's right either. Well, and here we are trying we to. We don't, we don't follow the same wage scale, wage scale either, or raise scale. True, but here so we are. I think here we are. We have to keep it separate. I understood, but here we are trying to. When it comes to health care, we're trying to save dollars and squeeze that buffalo nickel some more. But I, I don't think squeezing it, and that's why I, I, I'm glad we're keeping it the same. But I don't think we should squeeze our employees to save those few dollars. However, future increases, which we don't know, I like to at least think, I like to address that in the first after the first of the year, the personnel plan to maybe do some cost sharing when it comes to increases in the plan premiums. I don't mind the idea of cost sharing. I think that you know when there are increases, that's something to consider. I'm just worried if. Because the way I know these change, and they go up and down, typically they just go off. I'm worried about a large increase when trying to split a 50% share with an employee that won't be able to afford that increase. We're talking about three employees in town. I know. Yeah. So. Well, it would actually <clears throat> affect everybody. Well, it's going to yeah, affect everybody in 80-20. If someone's been, they're going to, right. it's going to affect they're them going to too. They're going to cost share. So I, I just think that we have our options open to do that at that time and or pick one of these different plans you know, at the yeah. time to, to, to change that, so. So to go along with you, I'm gonna tell you that the average deductible for for employer-provided plans has been 250, and the employee, because they're given a choice of not taking that plan, they can take a plan that has a higher deductible and pay a, pay a smaller rate, because they're offering three plans. That's what the that school they does, they offer the three. Right. Because they're a larger So maybe employer. we do a combination. Yeah. So where we, so maybe what, we do a combination, Bob, where we offer them more plans, and the one that's the highest tier here, they pay a higher percentage of the increase. A cost share. Yeah. In other words, that's that would spread the cost. But that's that's where uh, the industry is going is into the deductibles, and what's happening is where they're offered more than one plan, the employee ends up taking. The plan that costs less, so they'll go to a five hundred dollar deductible or a thousand dollar deductible, mm -hmm. only because uh, in some of them they're incentives, so they get some monies back, so it's a uh, pays for itself. Right. And in other cases, it's because they're going to use it when they really need it. You know. And so a lot of them are going with higher deductibles, and they have the cost share where you can save that money. Prior, you know, before taxes, they have some of them have health savings accounts. Right. Right. Uh, so uh, we have some options to continue, but the thing is, what I don't want to do next year, in fairness to the employees, wait till the ninth hour mm -hmm. in, in November next year, and mm -hmm. then tell them we're going to cost share and we're going to we're going to. Mm -hmm. uh, Unfortunately, again, we won't know, we won't know that until right. that time of the year. So that's why it's important that once you get the information, you act on it, you look at it. Right. You know, we're fortunate this year there was a saving. Typically, right. yeah. they go up right year. Yeah. And, but the thing is, I think what Bob pointed out, it's such an unknown for next year, and we could be in a world of hurt as far as paying a lot of dollars out. Yeah. And yeah. so we got to be vigilant. In other words, once this comes out, we got to make sure that the uh, three grandfather employees and all of our employees mm -hmm. have a, enough notice to make an appropriate change. So uh, how about if I send the memo out to all, all the departments, all the employees that are eligible for um, stipends or benefits, that the board decided to go with the current plan, no change, but to be aware that with the potential of any uh, increases that this will be reviewed and there's a potential that... I just think that, you know, the potential of there being a change is every year. Yeah. So I don't think to send a notice out now. No. No. I, I, I don't think it's needed. Yeah. That happens every year, you yeah. know. Okay. All right. This is something that's been reviewed every year. But the situation we're in where they come in at the last minute, you also have to understand is because they are not like, uh, and I'm going to use Harvard Pilgrim or Anthem, can tell you in June and July exactly what your increase is going to be. We're in the risk pool. Yes. Yeah. So they can't tell you till the last minute. Right. And when they do that, you're at the mercy because where do you go? You're, you know, I mean... Were a bunch of small communities or whatever that are thrown into that risk pool. So, see, one of the options for next year, if we do get a massive increase, yeah. we we could we could offer them many. We could well, offer more choice. Either they do car sharing or they take one of the other plans. That's right. Yeah. And I think we just look at it at the time that All it right. happens because I think that you know I don't want to make it part of the 
policy. But I have to say that I think we're going down that road only because the House passed the Trump tax plan today. Mm -hmm. It's going into the Senate. The Senate has their own version. They're eliminating the mandatory purchase of insurance. And when you do that, you know, uh, again, the, the uncompensated care part is driven by that. People that don't have insurance, so. Okay, I think Corinne, we... did you get the package? The AB20 or whatever? No, I don't have it. You didn't write it down when I said it? I'll give her a copy of this. Yeah. I actually don't... I'll give her this one. Yeah. We've we had a motion on the table to accept the, uh, the first plan, which is our current yeah, one. Yeah, I cut that motion. Do I hear any more discussion yeah. on the? Yeah, uh, made a motion to keep the health plan AD yeah. twenty. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Do I hear any more discussion on the current health plan as proposed? No. None. None? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All right. We have to sign those documents and get them in appropriately. Yeah, so, it should uh, be in your packet. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to get those documents, we have to sign the documents and get the plan in in a timely manner because we have a deadline approaching. Okay, so what you, you're doing that today, right? We're going to sign, sign the signs. documents and so they okay. can be forwarded at next business day. Okay. You know, I kind of, it's, it's too bad I forgot my pen because yours seems to skip all the time. <laughs> You think about this stuff all week long or what? <laughs> okay. So be nice. Of course. There is a flag, okay. a flag on there. There should be a flag on it somewhere. Okay. Okay, I'll get it. We'll get to it. I want. I may have a look at the other one. Okay. That's uh. I thought I saw it. I thought you were holding it out. No, that was a different yeah, one. That that flag was, yeah, I think. Personal plan. That's good. That was a personal plan. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll take a quick look on you. Go to the stock bridge. You yes. Want to start that? Yep. Everyone has a copy. Yep. Okay. The next item is the uh, stock bridge. We are uh, we have a review of the uh, RFP request for uh, proposals to complete the um, the, aug the augment that the town road agent in uh, building the bridge. I kind of reviewed that uh, the last couple of days. Yes. You know what, I am. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just tell I have it. I'm going to see if this is on the way to Yeah. See, I thought I knew you had it, but, you know. This is the other one. He was just joking you. <laughs> yeah. I know, I just said there's nothing there. <clears throat> it's good to be done on this. Have you seen it there? Would he put it in his basket? Yeah, well, okay. the confusion was it was addressed at Brian height. And so it threw me for a little bit. <laughs> that was old stuff. <clears throat> it was addressed to you, sir. Really? Well, I'll take it. Are you judging you're the only signature required on this? I think okay. so, the chairman. Okay, I can sign that. We're on the bridge now. I read through the bridge um, RFP and I couldn't see any quick changes that I needed to make. And did you see any, Bob? I, see, I have one that I'd like to make. Okay. What page is it on? Okay. Okay. It is before. I think you could use the page six. And if you look near the top, where there. Uh, laying out, you know, whether they're doing the footing or the excavation, the footing, how they get their payments. I think you should have a spot in there so you withhold 10 percent, or uh, you can withhold less if you want, but retain usually it. retain it for at least. I'm going to say no more than a year, but. Uh, it's up to you guys if you want it. 90 days, six months, or a year. Yeah, normally, normally retainage is what about 90 days after completion, Bob? <clears throat> 90 days after completion is usually my sum. Uh, I, I think, think the amount of money you're investing here, you might want to see what it's like in a year when it goes through the winter, you know, a whole cycle. Oh. <coughs> The other package that I gave you, yeah. I reprinted and I added that comment. Oh, did you? I don't know if it's, if it's it page on? six, right beneath the price per the project. So that's yours that you printed from home. I can okay, see that it yeah. looks different. 
And then that one, this page one six, six, I don't know if this is the right wording that you're looking for. Town Only because then we don't end up with what happened with the, I know they didn't want to hold any money back score, but yeah. uh, I wish we had now because... Well, we but, still have well, five. We have yeah, five but because it's not enough. And steel. I think, I think um, that sounds right, but we, I would think... Um, For a period of? 90 days, yeah. Is that what we, I don't know, does that sound fair? I know that if, if we go beyond 90 days and we do a year's period of time, if I were a contractor bidding on this, I would up it by that percentage so I was paid the full I'm going to tell you, large, large buildings, when mm -hmm. they hold, they hold it for a year. And I think they did when they did the community center. I did some large contracts, and I've only seen it you know, 90 days. So that's what the difference is? I just, I'm thinking that... The, the only because you know that if they get it done, and they, probably, I, they may do it now, they may do it in the spring. They do it in the spring. It hasn't gone through a winter cycle. We're talking a couple hundred thousand dollar job. Yeah. Do we want to ask the road agent what he's? Yeah, I he think is. we should. I know that I'm working on you know seven and eight million dollar jobs, and it's ninety days after completion. So I don't know. It, it's it's a choice of the board, so it's up to you guys. I'm just on. thinking out loud that if I was bidding this job, I would put enough money in there to have that, so I was actually paid in full in this contingency was my profit and overhead after the fact. Oh, okay. So I would up my price if I saw it in there for a year period of time. Yeah. Is my thinking. That's just thinking out loud. I think a minimal amount, I mean, time is needed. I agree. With, there is a set of time should be needed. I agree. But I, think I'm no, I'm I don't have any really problem splitting and going six months, maybe. Want to try that? or Sure. At least you have a cycle of use. At least you have a cycle of use. It sounds use. better than six, six months. months. 180, 180 days. days. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we should concur it with Jeff to see what his thoughts are as well. But okay. I think if he's <laughs> vehemently against it, I'd say we can drop down to 90 days. Yeah. Does this sound right? Oh, that? The town reserves the right to hold 10% in escrow of the total cost of work to be performed upon inspection and acceptance of the completed installation. Does that sound clear enough that um, for a period of 180 days. The only thing I was wondering if we could reword it so it doesn't say the town reserves the right because we're most likely going to want to do oh, that. Okay, the town requires the, the town requires a 10% retainage. What do you think, Bob? That, that's fine. Yeah, I, town typically it's called retainage. I want to see some verbiage where we're not left holding the bag right. you know, if something happens. So it just requires 10% uh, uh, requires holding 10% or will require? A ten I'd say will. Okay, will um, require will. a 10% hold. Can I ask a question? Sure. When does the clock start for this uh, retainage? withholding because you get substantial completion or are you talking when the punch list is complete because usually when you have substantial completion you do a walk around to a punch list it's on each payment Brian typically in the construction field mm -hmm. like if you've got a three hundred thousand dollar payment mm -hmm. that ten percent would be taken out of each individual oh, payment as you go mm -hmm. so at the end the town has got ten percent of the total job value right so it's done on each payment as we receive the payments. Correct, but I mean, once this the clock starts for that 90 days, though, that you're going to pay it. Oh, at completion after approval, which is she has as a bunch of questions. Yeah. Okay. The state has to sign off it when that's completed, correct? They should. I think I think so. I think the state they, has to sign they, off. They okay. inspect all bridges. Okay. State, so, ins state inspection? Yeah. Once the state blesses it, would that so, be a sign of completion? So that you need to sign a completion and then you're 180 days only in case, uh, no, heaven forbid, you have a bad rainstorm. Well, that would be a good way to word it, to state inspection or 180 days, whichever comes first, basically. So if it takes a while for the state, no, 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 no. we definitely want to keep it yes, 180 yeah. days. Upon inspection and acceptance of the complete installation, I think that that's worded by, yeah. Yeah. by the state, though. It's the state inspection. No. Oh, I think it could be the state or the town, you know, our town, you know, Jeff will be inspecting it as well. 
Oh, was he a certified bridge inspector? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are we hiring the town attorney? I the not town. Are we hiring the town engineer to inspect it as it's going if we go this route? You know the road engineer well, we've been using. Might not be a bad idea. That might be a good idea. So your clerk of the works. Inspected by the. Um, I think we should pay for that inspection. I think it'd be fair. Is a road is a road engineer qualified to inspect bridges? Typically, I would think they would be. Because we have the other one that we just hired recently to inspect Purgatory Pond. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking too. We, we need to ask that question. Okay. Let's ask Jeff to get a clarification of who we want to inspect it. We should check to make sure. Maybe we can even make a phone call to that engineer to see if he can inspect bridge work. Yeah. But I, think, I don't think it has to hold up the RFP, though. No. I think we got to get this out sooner than later. I need to you get You just need to have that verbiage in there so okay. that you know, upon inspection. I think even after we select somebody, we can negotiate that paragraph, you know, uh, somewhat. So bring them in front of us, you know, and go through it. Because I'm sure on their payment schedule, we'll have to go through that as well and make sure it's in the town's favor. Right. We've been, we've seen where it can be right. Okay. Because we left this payment schedule kind of open, and once that's determined, we want to make sure it's in the town's favor all the way through. All the way through. But the thing is, I just want to, uh, we have to, if, if everything else, technically, Jeff reviewed this and uh, he yeah. said, uh, the um, comments he made, you know, made sense. Right, to right. Do those. Yep, and I want to make sure that he hasn't picked up on anything else, so I'm hoping that okay, just, by uh, the end of tomorrow I should be able to get out. <coughs> the last paragraph yep. with him, and then let's get it out. Get it mailed out. Do we have a consensus? We need a vote, or you want to just uh, do it by consensus? By consensus. I think we're also. Okay. To go there. We'll vote on the contract when it comes in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Two RFPs to send out. Okay. Next item, uh, since we're talking construction, um, the school construction. And uh, mm -hmm. at this point, um, did we get a letter back, Lane, from the attorney? Yes. An email response. Do you have that in your box? There's nothing in the office, so you have it, everything in your mailbox. Because I didn't see it in my email before it came tonight. The attorney's response. Okay. I know, I'm sure I printed it off, put it in your box. Okay. That one's not addressed to me. I'm sorry, yeah. No. <laughs> What's underneath your bag? Is there anything there? Yeah, there's a few more. Yeah, you got too much. Too much is in front of you. <laughs> We're going to have to get you in at 4 o'clock, Mike. <laughs> Let me tell yeah, you. Let me take a look at the people. These are sold out on us. Yeah, absolutely. It's you have there? No, it's all right. Let me right. take a look. Um, I'm going. To, well, I'm, I'm going to take a look. I want. I'm going to. Can we? I like to go out of order if we can. We have a gentleman sitting in front of us who could. Uh, we could easily move that forward. Yep, and I'll go get the email. Right. So I'm going to go out of order to allow you to. Uh, okay. Because it's a. It's more of a routine sort of uh, process. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. For RSA 3195 B, I have uh, $603 in donations for Reefs Across Dunbarton and uh, the refund made out to the town. Okay. And I'd like you to accept it. I'll make a motion that we accept uh, the $603 as read in the RSA. I will second that for the Reese across Dunbarton. Any discussion on this, John? The uh, three hundred eighteen dollars was donated by the uh, uh, Alita and uh, Stosh for uh, we're going to have uh, fifty uh, lawn signs for the chili supper. And that, oh and, wow! Uh, they stepped up and paid for them, so. It, Goes in one way and comes out the other. And okay. Bounce it out. But I like to say thank you for them for yeah. stepping up and helping the, the fund. Excellent. How do you pronounce your last name? Stopa. 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 Yeah. All right. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. You have accepted the money. Thank you. Great job. Keep bringing it in. <laughs> <laughs> have you work on tax 
taxes next year. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have that one. I'll, I'll take credit when it's due, but that one I did not have. It was a Mitchell thing on it. I did not. <clears throat> it was on email, though. It was. It was well, I read that yeah. part, but she didn't make a letter up yet. No, because she had two questions, answers for oh. our question. Do we want to file suit or write a letter? I thought uh, we talked a little positive mm -hmm. last week. I'm thinking the letter is the best it. way to go to start with. Have her do a demand letter of performance right away. and. Uh, oh. If there's a contract they signed, it actually has language in there that they've abrogated their agreement because they haven't come to do anything. So, okay. uh, I, I thought it was the direction was to ask her what would be the best avenue yeah. to. But yeah, she well, did. Bob she had talked about and, that. But then she comes. She comes back to us and asks us what what, what do you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're demand letter tennis. first. Yeah. Okay. Demand letter first, and then uh, demand of action, and yeah. with a, with a set with a set response, no later. We went out here from them <coughs> through the attorney. Okay. Correct. And make sure um, in our letter <coughs> that they know that we had to move that steel for safety reasons before the Halloween activities in the center of town. Yeah. In that letter, uh, at the cost of the town, just so we can have that tracked and recorded somehow, other than our meeting. You know, and then if that doesn't work, we'll we'll follow suit with it. Do you want to give them a period of time to respond to the letter? So I'm thinking, uh, what do we do? Thirty days the first time? I, I would no. I, I'd recommend what I what the lawyer would recommend. Okay, yeah. but ask her for a recommended through date. Recommended through date. Okay. okay. What be a reasonable amount of time? This is all going to go certified mail and all that kind of. Okay. Thirty days may be a long time, so we'll go in consensus. Did you ever uh, look at the contract? Because I believe it's the, it's the standard boilerplate that we have. There's language in there regarding, you know, if they fail to deliver, you know, you have. It, it is. Yeah. There, it's all in there, Brian. Just we're we're not in a good standing with them because the majority of their payments have already been made. So. Right. No, I understand. Okay. Any other further discussion on that school construction? No. All right. Uh, there was an emergency in the town office. We, uh, we had problems with the uh, plumbing. Yes. And Lane. It's, it's very <laughs> important that we... <laughs> okay. So, so it's a real crappy situation. It is. Um, I would say that it, I think the problem's been resolved, but we do... I'm still... Hey, Jones. I'm, well, I'm still um, smelling... I don't know if it's gases or whatever, but... Um, it's something that we may want to be prepared to have to address in the near future because the... You are still smelling an aroma down there? It, it's like in that hallway right by the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody in the bathroom. There hasn't been anyone in the bathroom for a while, but I don't know if it's from the basement through the vents. Um, but we have a holding tank over by the library that runs across the lawn that comes into the building that goes back out to the second holding tank that's on the east, west, what side is that's that? West side. west side of the building mm -hmm. near the road, and then that goes underneath the highway through two properties to a leach field. And when the they street. pumped it, Lee, uh, they pumped our system, did they do? They did an additional Snake. snaking, yeah. and they said that everything appears to be working has properly. Has anybody been down in our basement since they did it? JR came in right after. And there was nothing down he there. He said that the snaking, uh, the, what we pumped out seemed to fix it temporarily, but it just should be Was the snaking to, done in the basement? No, there's no access in the basement. So they did it right through the... The toilet, and then they looked at the... Um, uh, St. O's did not see any blockage that he could identify just from looking in the hole. So we, we have sewage that comes from the library? Yeah, Fed across the lawn. Okay, and then I don't I don't know if it intersects into ours. Um, it should have. Well, that tank was pumped back when Ted was on the board. Yeah, it was in uh, 2014 yep. that they did that mm -hmm. one. The leach field was installed in 2010, and at that time we pumped it out and then inspected the pipe that went across the road. So with the camera, and that appeared to be in good shape. So that's why they proceeded with. 
you know, uh, changing out the leach wheel. Sometimes smell comes from not so much that pipe, but all septic systems and piping need to be ventilated and they're done through the vent system. Mm -hmm. There could possibly be something blocking our vent up top, which would make it draft down through the building. Oh. So maybe we should call JR to have him check that. Oh, okay. You know, so it, it could be a vent Great system pipe, and pipe. not so much in the tank now. It yeah. hurt. Or another situation might be that the tank doesn't have enough water in it yet to um, kind of to tone the smell To create the down. seal, right? This, right. It causes like a, but so the smell should, should be going through that vent regardless. Okay, so I'll, we'll monitor it for the next few weeks, and if we feel that there's still that... I don't think uh, it would be a bad idea to have them come in. I don't think it would be an expensive thing to come look okay. at it. And you're talking about the vent pipe that runs up through <coughs> the yeah, attic. Right. I've seen those blocks, and it causes havoc. Got a question for, for that. Is there any um, drains that, besides the, the bathroom, that are full of around either downstairs or upstairs? They may have a P trap that's not full of water. To, and does that happen over the school in the bathrooms? The, the, the floor drains, the P traps, they dried out mm -hmm. and the odor was coming back up through. And they had to take a fill of the water and then they put a little, and St. Don't put a little bit of vegetable oil on top of it. That way it keeps the water from evaporating and the, the smell never came back. Hmm. I don't should, think maybe I should have St. Ange inspect it instead? Or I don't, I don't know, know if you have any drains other than just the yeah, bathroom. I don't know. We have one sink here mm -hmm. in, the, in the small kitchen here. You have and a bubbler mm -hmm. and then we have the bathroom. Are yeah. they all used? I've been used. The sink used? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the question. Well, yeah. I, we actually had our water test done from that sink because we yeah. need to have a sink that wasn't right. used for five hours. So I would, I would so say JR only could be the plumber and San Jose will have nothing to do with the vent. Okay, right no. all right. So I'll have them check all the, the, the venting. Yeah, okay. See if you can determine where the smell's coming from and then we'll go from there. Okay. Address it at next week's meeting or whatever. I won't be <laughs> here next week. Oh, you're not here? No. The special meeting that Bob's calling? Yes. Well, I've already said that last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, move around the agenda, move around down. We're going to go to general town business. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> Do we want to talk about our um, hiring workshop yesterday? Yeah, and then I can update you with what yeah, I we'll have for... We had a, uh, we had a, uh, a state, we, for the uh, administrative assistant for the zoning and planning boards. Mm -hmm. We had a... Uh, uh, resume review yesterday by the key stakeholders, the selectmen, and the town administrator. And we narrowed the list down to four candidates, mm -hmm. and we invited four, ca invited four candidates to come in and interview. Yeah. And can I update you with now that? Now you can update that. Okay, so I reached out to all four uh, individuals that were candidates for the uh, position. I've gotten two scheduled for tomorrow. The third one I had scheduled for four o'clock on Friday, on uh, Monday. Um, and I just, when I went to go print off that, this uh, email, got the response from the fourth person. She says, circumstances have changed. She's no longer interested. So, so at 4 o'clock on Monday. Well, I would like to propose that we I'll change him to, to, to tomorrow. Do all three at one afternoon. Oh, all three. I mean, that'd that's be a only great idea. Yep. Uh, and then it would free up the week that everybody is hoping to have. Does that work? Uh, I think yes. the third one was the gentleman that so was on the list. So we're going to go 5 o'clock, 3, 4, 5. I think so. Okay. Uh, that's not that unreasonable. And then we're just getting it all worked right. together and done. I, I would put that on an email first in the morning, mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. And I will, uh, well, I'll, I'll get, I'll confirm it with the gentleman that's scheduled right. for Monday. And if we can do that, which I don't think will be an issue. Okay. Then we'll Are we going to do pizza again? Again? Okay, I want coffee. Coffee, coffee's coffee. I said coffee. Yeah. I said coffee, remember? We want a very cordial. Okay, so that's you were bringing it. I, I will if you ask me. I'm actually For probably going to get a Dunkin' Donuts and I'll bring okay. a box of Joe. <coughs> All okay. right. And then we got to keep in mind that I think it's a, we have no qualified candidates, so the, we do have an option of re advertising. We, find <coughs> we do have uh, some good resumes to, you know. But re resumes? Ask you which one uh, didn't. Uh, one of the, um, I think the one from Plasto or something like that. Oh, okay. Throw this out. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh. Very good. Okay, next thing I want to talk about bids for the, uh, uh, for the, we have the door in the library. We have two bids that came in. And uh, if you recall, one was from last week and one came in on email this week. And uh, I think uh, I think we can take a look at them and make a decision tonight of which we want to go. That library is now being held up with gray tape. Uh, it's beyond uh, 
uh, needs repair uh, uh, stat. Okay, so I'd, I'll just give you a little bit of um, information. The one that Bob is looking at um, spoke to me uh, on the phone, came in, um, he met with Mary. He was a gentleman that did a lot of the outside repairs for the painting here. And um, that's when I reached out to that painter to ask what his name was, you know, wondering if he was local, if he's from the Goffstown area. He said that he is working with um, Mass Road Lumber. Uh, they have given him all the quotes that he needs um, and the cost that you can see there. I think on his, he's, he's recommending that we use the same hardware because of the cost involved in replacing it. Um, he gave us an option for both. Okay, all right. I, I felt that it was important that and, and they, they have, did as well. Right, and to have both options so that we can decide. I don't mind using serviceable hardware. Right. And in the sense that, was there a problem with that hardware, Bobby? You mentioned something about. Um, didn't, didn't they mention something about they can't lock it down? That's right. They oh. wanted to do a fold open type device so that they could use the crank. Right. And, and I, I, I brought that up, that question up, because they both asked me about it. And maybe on the second quote that we got, does it say anything about um, doing a. Push key, by, push a key by lock watch. from both sides, just the lock mechanism, or did, did he decide he couldn't? Um, so I brought, a, I brought up a, a deadbolt type thing, and he said because it's a public building, you can't have a deadbolt, you have to have a key. Yeah. But do they make the key locks that would be a, they do, accessible but it's not from both a good, sides? It's not a good scenario to have that lock from both sides okay. with that key, because okay. if the key's ever lost, you're in a bad situation, so it's not recommended. Okay. Even though they do make them. Okay. Um, I've, I've reviewed these, and the only thing I saw on um, on here was the finish. I would like to follow the finish that's existing out there, mm -hmm. which is like either a dull brass um, or like an oil rub bronze, an older style finish, and not have a bright finish that they have quoted in here. The finish sometimes does change the pricing a little bit, but it's it's fairly it's a minor. Three dollars. Yes. And the only other thing I wanted to check is I saw that one quote is doing a paint grade door where the other door is doing a um, varnished. And that door currently is painted both sides. You guys go in there. I know it's painted on the exterior. I have to, I don't recall what's under the tape. <laughs> Do you know if the it's inside green. is... I think, I'm sure it's green. I think it's a green color, green. so that would oh. be a solid so stain. Both sides, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. So this door should be fine with this being a paint grade door, where this guy did a clear varnish door. I have no issue with that. So, um, and he's got a fur door, which is a good, good for the weather, which the existing door there, I think, is fur. So I'd like to just match existing with the color of the hinges and the panic and I would suggest going with the new panic as well and having it all you know meet the newer codes of the newer panic because the, the one there doesn't do the hold open that's what it's like in this building the only other thing I'd like to say is I like the style of that panic hardware on there being a crash bar that bends down instead of a crash bar like this yeah. only because it looks a little <clears throat> bit more authentic Mm -hmm. for the age of the building mm -hmm. so I'd like the crash bar if we can to match that one with the same finish but with the hold open feature for them is do they make them yeah okay they do mm -hmm. and what it what was quoted on the first one that I only have one copy of was that what was quoted there or you don't know what um, it looks like it says with new panic bar panic with, bar. Okay. with door opener uh, brush chrome so the finish has to be in question I, I would say that it most likely is one like that because they're the most common now. Mm -hmm. So I'd like, if we could look into that, but I think that uh, with the pricing we're reviewing here, it's substantially cheaper so that I think that we could, you know, make a motion to go with this guy with the adjustments of the colors of the hardware. With the modifications. The modifications, yeah. Yep. What you guys thought? I don't think it's going to go above. I mean, let's say it's like $200 more for hardware. It's still going to come up significantly lower than this. Yeah, it could be, you know, it could be a long way. So I don't remember what that first quote was. It was, um, you can say the quote. Um, the total quote on here was twenty-one twenty-four sixty. 
I don't have that one, me, right? No, I, I'll admit, I didn't print okay, it off. I'll do it in there downstairs. <coughs> So well, I'll entertain a motion to, to wait a second. Okay. Here. I'm rereading this and it looks like two options, right? He left the hardware out of it, so it adds another twenty one oh four thirty with the new hardware. So it's still substantially cheaper. Yeah, he's, he's, he's 6650 with the hardware, yeah. so that's still substantially cheaper. I just want to make sure. So and you, gotta slide yeah, 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 yeah. If we and have you the don't want to use the existing hardware. No, because it doesn't have the hold open device. So that's one of their big issues. So if we're going to change the door and put the proper panic on it, we don't want to have it boarded is it, correctly. Is that, a cold, is that a cold issue, or is it just something they want? No, it's for when, when people are coming in and out. Yeah. They have to leave a rock in the door, otherwise they have to go and unlock the door every okay. time somebody walks like, out. Like here. Yes. Okay. I, I'm okay. So. They have to put a rock in the door to keep the door. Like on these doors, you know, when you press the button and you turn the little latch. Yeah. It stays will, unlocked. That panic device doesn't have that ability to stay unlocked. So, every time somebody comes to that door, they have to either go and open it push or it leave up. something in the door. Oh. Okay. And all day long, so it's yes. pushed in and out. And okay. so that was one of their big concerns. So. I don't want to reuse that hardware and have it bored wrong on the brand new door. Okay. Agreed. So, <clears throat> so do you want to get a quote on the, the old-fashioned door? No, no he because he, he does. He's he approved used, it with the modification. Right. I'll write it right on there. Yeah. He has an option. A there. An option for the push. Yes, yeah, he does. Oh, okay, good. No, no, not for the push, but for that to keep it open. Oh. We're asking them to add, if, if available, we want the one with the push that it can stay open to. Correct? Right. No. Not this type of bar. Not this type, but the, the, but the more traditional bar. Traditional and, bar. That can be that stayed can open. Be locked open. It can open. be open, locked open. Correct. And that's at an extra cost? Yeah, it'll probably be. It'll it typically be. is. It will be. Yeah. And you sure there's existing open. hardware finish? But that was the library trustees and the librarians' concern was that they couldn't lock it down if they had to lock it down. If Meaning to keep the door closed from when someone they're open. Prevent, yeah. When they're open, yeah. all of a sudden you have a lockdown. Yeah. They don't have the capabilities other than <coughs> the door from the outside. But these don't have those options, do they? Yeah, you just turn the, uh, like the little latch on this you one. You turn it. Like this one here, where you turn that so it's locked from the inside. Oh, okay. You can be able to get in. Okay, right. all right. The push bar would make the difference here. Use existing hardware finish, dull antique pass, or oil rubbed bronze. I want to make sure, you're going to have to communicate this, so make sure you yep. understand what yep. we're asking yep. for. Match style of existing panic. I put the notes on so you'll have them. Okay, I want to take a vote. Uh, we want to take a, uh, as with the changes as we're asking. Do we want to approve this uh, contract? From ARC Property Services? Yeah. Well, um, uh, I'll, I'll make, make, make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion. That we accept the work order from ARC Property Services, Ryland Carr, to uh, install uh, the new door at the library using um, a new panic hardware and door opener, um, and to have it match the existing door hardware finish including the hinges um, for a total of 212460 for the door and 210430 for the hardware. And I'll circle those two amounts for you to look at. So the total will be the 42 and change? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll second that, but I'm going to bring it back to the discussion. The problem is he's going to have... 
make the change. All of that is correct. He's going to have changes to the price, so you can't be firm on the price. Yeah. He's, he, he, he's, you're going to nail him down, he won't be able to do it. So it's yeah. going to be a plus or minus. So we got to anticipate a several hundred dollar potential increase. Yep. Uh, oh, that was what the. Right down here. So, so I'm, don't I'm, write those I'm, amounts down if you can, only because yeah, we're going to uh, make, another, make the motion without the amounts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how do you want to list it without amounts? Well, we're going to have to modify. He's going to have to modify. The amounts are going to come back. But the thing is, what's going to be a reasonable amount of money for the for the hardware change? I mean, we already have a set. It's going to be above what he already has. It's right. going to be four or five hundred dollar difference. Right. So, okay, so you, just do you want think to you it? might be only because he's possibly the uh, bidder you're looking at or to find out what that cost would be? Yep. We can and do then that. vote on it afterwards. We can vote it next week. And say that it looks like he has the uh, proposal that we're looking for mm -hmm. other than this change. Yep. What is the cost of this change? Yep. Right. So okay. we're just going to so continue just gonna the motion to next week. Okay. That's only a few. Two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you want to have, you want to give lean the authority to approve that? I actually, one? give that back to me and I'll make a motion that we approve the door so that can get on order. Okay. And then we'll do the hardware on it in two weeks. Yeah, the, the, change, the change decision. Okay. Yeah. Because that's all to do with the hardware. Well, you know, or, or as you just mentioned, if it's within a few hundred dollars, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. give lean the authority to, to complete the contract. Complete we the have contract. the money in the budget, so. Yeah. I'd rather do that than get things going. All right. Because Let's try and word this again. Yeah. You know, what do you got written down well, so far? It's, it's right. a big mishmash, so I'm just going to listen to you guys say it off. The, the audio is on. Yeah. It is on. <laughs> it to me again. Okay, we're going to make a motion to accept the work order from ARC Property Services, Ryland Carr, um, to install the new door and new hardware at the town library. Um, making sure that we use the existing door hardware colors and hinge colors and uh, match the style of the existing panic and give the town administrator the leeway to review the new pricing on the exist on the uh, hardware upgrades as we requested to review and approve yeah that's all we're going to say we're not going to put the numbers to no. We'll let the document speak for itself. Yeah. So I wrote the notes on there. Okay. Who's going to second that? I'll second that as before. And hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, Lee, if you have any questions, just give right. me a call. And, and Lee, fresh chrome is the finish you want. No. Oh, no. no. Read, Read the, the notes down no. below. Use existing or Finish yeah. doll antique press. That's not the same as brush chrome? No, no, no. no. That's, That's brush chrome. This is brush chrome. That looks like silver. Right? Well, it is. It, but brush chrome is going to be shiny. 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 Antique brass is what we want. Yeah. Right. See how I wrote no above that? Brush chrome there. See, I circled it and I wrote no. You circled stainless and you said no. Then you, you yeah, both circled. Yeah, are no. Okay, this is a no. Okay. And I put the notes down below all yeah. the way. Use existing with finished dull antique brass. Or oil or rubbed, 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 or rubbed, rubbed bronze. bronze. I got it. That's okay. oil. Oil. Yep, and then you see the note all the way at the bottom. And style of existing panic hardware. Yep. And I think I, we figure a couple hundred dollar difference. Okay. Maybe two to three hundred. More than more than that. Uh, it could be up to five million change. Okay. But it's still that, substantially we, cheaper than the other. Right, even with 500. Right. But we want to make sure that if it's 500, you don't have to come back to the board. Okay. Let's get this motion working. This job working. Okay, let's move on. All right. And also, can you find out the time frame that he could get it done? I think he said that he checked with uh, Mass Road Lumber. That it would take two weeks to get the blank. Yep. And he was going to match exactly what's there. And that's why I was hoping we could order it now so we can get this done before the end of the year and we can yeah. expend it. And money. he said he would have time to install it. Okay, if, great. If you we were going to end with that. So. Okay, we're still, now we're going to move on. Next subject, the, the drip edge around this building. We still have one quote in. And since we have uh, 
uh, member of the cemetery trustees here. Mm -hmm. We still need your your gentleman to come by and talk to us. All right. Does anybody touch base with them? I think. We... With with that with yeah. with them. Yeah. I'm waiting for those other quotes to come okay. in so that I can. Pose right. I that may be. Uh, I'm going to say no. So mm -hmm. if you can help. Facilitate that if you can do that. Oh, for saying no, she's that. Does anyone want her? I sent them. Oh, okay. I picked up the phone yeah, once sure. and then I sent them an email asking them for a quote to do that work. work. And I don't think I've gotten a response from them. I think the. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'd like to also get this done before the end of the year and get before the ground freezes. Out. Yeah. And before the ground freezes, right. I'm not sure. We we waited. We put this off last week, Brian. This end hoping we get the quote this week. And I didn't know if that amount seemed reasonable to you guys. Brian. I haven't seen it, so I have no idea what you think. Can you take a look at it now, Brian? Sure. If, the, if the amount seems reasonable, I think we should act on it and get this. I'm just going to text him out and I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah, Brian. so I had Mike Underwood saying he was going to give me a quote, and then Saints. Is, it, is that what they're called? Saints Lawn Care? Saints Lawn Care, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I just am waiting for them. Great. So we don't have a meeting next week. So we're going to be at the end of this month. It's got to move. So I'm thinking if we can act on this tonight, we should probably try and get this rolling. I know we don't have the other bids in, but... Mm -hmm. No, is they going to, um, if I read this, they're talking about the, the drip edge, that they're going to take and just do fabric and stone. They're not going to put a, an actual, like, pressure-treated timber no. in. No, no, nothing like that. And then he, they quoted front and back. But with mm -hmm. that quote, because he didn't want to get in real detail for sides, mm -hmm. it would take care of the whole building. All four sides. All so four sides. So basically, yeah, broke four sides. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just think if we wait two more weeks, Brian, we're going to miss our window to do it. Yeah. And then we're going to have the whole spring with wire hitting the building, which we want to avoid. Well, I say, I can text them tonight to have them call when you first All right. I was going to say, wouldn't this fall under the getting three quotes? Mm hmm. Yep. So if you get the two other quotes and you find which one is the better quote, mm -hmm. doesn't it make sense you take just take action and, and take action and go ahead and schedule it? Uh, yeah. Those as soon as we get the quotes, then you can act on it. That's right. what we're we're saying. I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable. With that. We, we have to make the decision. She can. No, you don't have no. to because she can get three deal, yeah, quotes in a department expense. Um, a less than ten thousand, you have to get a d um, try for three quotes. If you don't get response, you can deal with two quotes. But what time are you going to be in the morning? I will be here if I can get out eight o'clock. I'm going to shoot for eight. I've got a busy day. Please. So I say you know, I don't know who's bidding on this at all. So, I, but is in there some place uh, where if it's a town business, you, they get a little bit of a break on, in other words, if they, they're a little higher than the other two, they still might get it because they're local? No. Oh, you don't do that at all? Local okay. advantage? Yeah. Probably. They're all local, I think. Oh, I don't know who's big. This one is, the other one is, I don't know about okay. the Saints. I, I'm not, just saying, I thought maybe there was a, a uh, uh, in uh, see you where you had that in place. Well, local, local advantage. Okay. Um, Did you want the, uh, the uh, I've ICC never seen that, I don't think it's in a regulation. No, it's not, it's a board decision, but it's... It's within, yeah, it, the bid policy says that we will make every attempt to, to, to offer a local. So local if the local contractor, like I said, I don't know who bids it, but the local contractor is like, I don't know what the bids are. If we're if a couple hundred dollars higher or something. Oh, within the, the same range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Because right. yeah. right. you know you're dealing with that person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Don't need to put that, just put you yeah. in for bids. Just waiting for bids. So we're on consensus that we're going to... Yeah, and Lee, could you email us the three months and then yeah. we can kind of just give you a little yeah. report back? So and the, so and the, only, the only thing I would ask is, uh, Dave brought up something last week about the color stone. Yes, and I have it on my notes. Minutes. Right, yeah. 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 Just, just keep that I'd in mind. I'd have to too. confirm the type of stone that he's going to provide. Right. But. Brian, two of the suppliers have a grant colored gray stone. Yep. And I know the stuff that comes from Pike mm -hmm. is a very white looking, bland color stone. So. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to use either Henniker Crush or Mount Williams. They both have a gray looking stone that looks yeah. Yeah, a little bit nicer see. looking the granite color. Six one that doesn't have that part I don't it's think there's any cost difference. Yeah. It's just a you know which place you pick. Yeah, yeah nice absolutely. Calmer. Calmer looking looking. Right, I'm gonna let uh I'm gonna continue on. Thank you, gentlemen, yeah. for the comments. Now uh, I'm gonna let uh, Dave report this.
I'll, I'll include you in the, the quote so that you guys are aware that oh, yeah, that was there's part a, of a yeah. shared expense here, which I think if it's in this range is mm -hmm. very reasonable. I think that's what we agreed to. Great. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't at that meeting, so yeah. it's good where you guys agreed to. I'm just going to make a note. Uh, my aunt Catherine Bellavo passed away at 96 and a half years of age. Um, Sorry to hear that. Recently, here on November 11th. And um, I just wanted to make it known for the record she was the Boston Post cane holder. Wow. So we returned that to the town. Is this that um, right yeah. And uh, Lean has that now. Um, I notified Allison, I think Lean might have too, to let her know. And in, in returning the cane quickly to the town, it was my thought that um, we have another elderly woman in town that's also in a nursing home that was a runner-up when we provided that cane, Mrs. Crosby. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping as a select board that instead of waiting till the next town meeting to present it, because um, mm -hmm. I'd like to present it quicker than that so that she has a chance to have that Boston Post cane. Cause when you get to that age in your life, it's a pretty important achievement to be able to get. And when you got to make it to 95 or 96 to get that, it's a long ways. Yeah. So yeah. that was my thought on that, and um, I was hoping that you know Allison and Lean could uh, you know help that prepare the yeah, uh, okay. company Ross. Okay. I we have a consensus of yes, yeah. and uh, I think next meeting we can put that on the agenda and make it happen. Okay, and do you want to visit her at the nursing home? I think we could it? present it to her if you guys want to do that. I think that would that's be nice. Yeah. Appropriate, yeah. And she mobile. Okay. Like to go with Jeff. Um, I guess I could find that out. And if she's not, we can make a visit. I, I have no problem with doing that. Okay. We'll we'll, we'll contact. We'll coordinate that with Jeff. Okay. Very good. All right. There are some other items that are going to be non-public, but we're going to defer non-public for this time. There it has to do with some employee employee actions. I'm not going to wonder that next week. I think there's no we, there's no urgency about completing that. <laughs> no meeting next week. Next meeting. Oh, what is uh? So next week, it just did say next week. <laughs> well, I, I was still thinking. Well, I was, well, I was pushing this meeting on to me for next Thursday. Are we still in the mailbox? Board? Yes, we are. I think it's the rate of pay by employee. Oh, that that, that is. The one you're talking about? No, there was another one. That was. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, <coughs> it was. Um, well, there's one on rate of pay, and I think from administrative action, it was just showing that. Did you see that one about rate of pay? I don't know what that okay. I did tell Woody that I would leave it on the agenda for the board to discuss. In case he's not available. Okay. Tonight? Mm -hmm. Two piles here, too many piles. That feel your pain. Right here. I don't know. There you go. That's the reason. I don't think there's any action needed on that. I thought it was handled, uh, I thought she handled it well already. That was the rate of pay was lowered because he didn't have that item, and it was an administrative load on an exit interview. Mm -hmm. And it was. Is there any certain way you want me to write this? It was just we're talking about uh, uh, <coughs> without saying names. We're just talking about uh, pay rates for a town employee. How did he come up with the uh, the amount that he came up with? It differs from yours. That's what the walking in uh, the uh, onto the Street job was, exper experience was. And then, how did you come up with your number? We have a wage scale that says yeah. that with the CDL, this rate without is a, at that. Okay. Um, the one that we approved earlier in the year. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think there's any action needed there. But so I think it's a wage scale discussion. Yeah. This is this is the item that we're going to put in non-public for next uh, for the following week. Cut yourself. I caught myself. I did. If I don't, Bob's going to catch me next. It's from no, he's going to make you come in next week Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>
So Lena, this goes back to you. Okay, I'll uh, give, that. But give them back, give them some feedback, yeah. corporate feedback. Yeah. Okay, that we need to discuss it. Okay, just to let you know, we're, did all three samples of the water get through or just one? Uh, all three of those get tested yet? All three have been tested. That is the, um, the breakdown and description of what the, they will be testing for. Okay. And, um, so really, it's uh, it is, at this okay. at this point, there's no. I just we're wait, anticipating results. Correct. Okay. The water testing. We just anticipated results. It was accomplished. Okay. okay. Water test results were in. So you want me right there? Right. Water what? test result. No. We're water test. Would, samples were taken. We are uh, awaiting results. Okay. Yeah. Uh, heating oil still a work in progress. Yeah. We, we're still getting quotes. Yeah. They're out for quotes. And this is uh, this was in my email box, but it goes to and that's for a transfer station. Oh, it might have gotten picked up. Okay. okay. What does that know? It's, uh, no, it's about about, about uh, material. About it's for a transfer station in business. Mm -hmm. well, so not not even like this. Yeah. <coughs> out for you. And I'm running out of. Um, you're running out of places to buy yeah. stuff too. Yeah. No, I think it's all right. <laughs> Oh, you guys are nice. want to give this back to her? <laughs> so I'll make sure I communicate to you tomorrow, 3 o'clock, yep. for our first interview, 4 o'clock, and I'll try to get the, the third one Great. for 5 o'clock, and get them all done. And you'll give us a heads up on the yep. tally on that. And, um, Library John Schroeder mentioned that he had this little questionnaire. He's yep. already sent that to me. Um, was it I'll, interesting? I'll forward it to you so that you can look at them, and if there's any other questions you want to add to them, then you can do that. Now, um, can you print them off so we can have a copy to follow on if he's asking them, or if we're in filling? Yeah, yeah, it'll take a second. There, it's take. actually on my desktop. Okay. It's minimized, so I can print those off for you mm -hmm. leave so you can so look at them. I'm lost. This is um, tomorrow. Uh, do you want anything in the No, we've already discussed okay. it. it was already, right. This was a, this is a well, recap. This, this was a recap. Right. You're kind of mumbling back and forth. You both know what you're talking right. about, but I didn't. Okay. okay. Um, we recall last week we got a citizen um, from the school board who questioned the, the, necess the uh, revisiting impact fees. Yeah. I did bring that up last night to the uh, planning board, and we had the uh, Central New Hampshire Regional um, ad Advisor, the coordinator there. And uh, the discussion was no, but how no? Because um, one, as a, we do have growth, but it's minuscule. We don't have growth. We don't have massive growth. And he said massive growth is like a several hundred housing subdivision. We don't have that. We have a few houses going up. That was reiterated by the planning board chairman by saying that it's dead as far as growth in this town compared to what we've had in the past. And impact fees would only address new buildings and new businesses going up. And we don't have new businesses going up. It's minimal, to say the least. And then the, the other cost was to administer such a program, it would require more than likely a full-time employee just to administer a program. And the cost of hiring full-time employees <coughs> would surely more than likely offset any savings that the town or revenue the town would get. By, Im by imposing the few impact fees that would be put on new building and new construction. Yep. So, and I think when I was there also, if I don't feel mind my no, speaking please. up, um, Ken had pointed out that it's not just strictly for the so uh, resources of the school to help. Their, their concerns at the meeting last week was that um, the school budget is increasing, it's going up, they're trying to find other avenues to help offset their costs and their expenses by finding another source of revenue, which they thought this might be something that we look into. Um, but it's not just strictly you get it at this, you put this in place and it's strictly for the school. It well, could the school be utilized. Portion, the school portion there, right, would be. Right. So they'd have an impact fee for the school. And then if the town wanted, they could have one for other things. They could have one for road maintenance. They could have one for building maintenance, transportation, so, et cetera. In fact, in Goffstown, there's a recreational one of $1,000. Oh, so there's a, lot set of things. a whole number of Yeah, so there's a whole number of them. So they okay. are right, the school portion would go directly to them. Okay. Right. Um, but what they did say that the administration costs outweighed any revenue benefits. With the number of houses that we have currently going on. Mm -hmm. He said that only a very small portion of the houses that are in his <clears throat> uh, geographical regional area have them. 
the small portion of the towns have them. Most of them don't that are smaller towns like us. Yeah, he said something about that they were a nightmare or they were just really... Well, hard to administer or, because there's a, there's problems in these legalities if you don't do it right. The town yeah. can be liable for it oh, if it's so, administered incorrectly. So what I'd like to do, Lane, is um, do a little letter back to the school board chair. Okay. And I'd like to just hit on a couple of the quick topics that he stated more than... You know, just let him know what he checked with the planning okay. board. Central Regional Planning. I actually happened to have the recorder on all night, so I'll listen to his yeah. comments. <laughs> so, but what I'd like to do is just make a brief description that Mike Kaminsky met with the planning board and discussed it, and they didn't think it was a good idea because of the administration okay. costs, but also it got reaffirmed at that same meeting because Central Regional Planning, planning was, was there. there. Right. And then you can go into some detail in their comments, and then... Okay. If we give that to the school board, they'll at least know we researched it. Okay. Yep. 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 Worked yeah. out good to have them there. Yeah. We discussed that. That's what I figured. By the time you pay for health benefits, retirement, the person's wages, yeah. it ends up costing the resident money to try to administer a program that they get less from than what they're paying for. We could only do it if we could do it with our current administration. <laughs> Well, we don't have the foundation. And Kate, right. yeah. Kate right. made the, the, the point that well, there are no new developments. <coughs> no new subdivisions. <laughs> two, yeah. two subdivisions on the pipeline. Yeah. Right. Right. The, the ones that were pending have died on the vine. Right. So no and so with no new subdivisions <coughs> and no new businesses coming into town, where is this impact fee going to get any dollars other than paying well, a salary? Another cold, mm -hmm. that's it. You got to go okay. to the other end. <laughs> Now I'm going to take it back to the uh, to the public. <coughs> we're going to open up for public comment, and I'm start with Mr. Martell. We're all done. Everything. Okay. Yeah. Lee Martell. Um, yeah, I'm kind of curious. So what's going to happen with the bridge parts, the concrete parts? So where are they they still being stored uh, on location? Yeah. Or where they were made? They yeah. were being stored where they're made until hopefully we get to okay. select a oh. contractor. Yeah. So they have no problems with keeping them there. Well, yeah. Jeff has worked it out so far with them, and we haven't heard about it in any long term. Yeah. So that's why we're hoping to get this out there as quick as yeah. possible. Are you volunteering your front yard? Yeah, sure. sure. yeah. There's some pretty big there. structures. Put some flowers in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Anything else? No. I no. That was just curious. Oh, I understood. Okay. <coughs> Go ahead, Brian Pike. Um, uh, budget question. Last year we had money put in there for a part-time employee for the office. That ever materialized? Um, we're not. If we're paying a consultant to come in at a lower rate with no benefits. Mm -hmm. we, consultant comes in and does reconciliation, so he's doing some of the work mm -hmm. that we wanted to for the uh, mm -hmm. in lieu of oh, the assistant. Yeah. And so we're not actually saving money by getting this consultant mm -hmm. come in. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And so it was. Uh, it was an administrative uh, decision by the town administrator mm -hmm. to. Continue with this consultant at a savings to the town. Oh, wow. and, um, and what I found out when I reached out to him is that he does do this for a number of different towns that don't have mm -hmm. staffing um, with their his ex expertise in. Um, so you might say we outsourced it. Yeah. Right. So Brian, another thing I'm hoping with our new planning and zoning coordinator, uh, we're going through a very thorough review of hiring them, including um, John Trottier. And Ken Swayze, we're hoping that we hire somebody that has enough experience that Lean won't have to spend as much time down here as she has in the past, which would free her up to do her job on the other end. And that's what that's what our hope is going to be in the long term. So, in the comment on that, we had a good strategy meeting with the stakeholders last night. Good. Good. Okay. Um, second little thing. Uh, the, speaking of the bridge that we brought up. Um, have you got an estimate on the, uh, an estimate on what the RFP is going to cost you? Because I mean, I know that usually I know with the state when we have a uh, professional engineer estimate on you know, all your engineering and your costs, so that way when you get your quotes in or your bids or proposals, whatever you want to call okay. it, you you'll know this is what this you know the market value should be, and if they're going to be either higher or lower, and you know so you can gauge what you're getting. If you're going to get your money's worth, you get screwed, or if you're getting a great deal, or whatever the case may be. Can I, can I make a recommendation? Um, we have um, put a deposit on that bridge to create the engineering and pour the cast. So we have a bridge. We still have an outstanding balance, but technically, because we have a contract 
to provide this service, we can encumber the remainder of that particular piece out of the highway budget so that we can ensure that we have money for the bridge and not have to include that in the RFP portion. Yeah, I thought we were already doing that. Anyway. Well, I haven't done it yet, but I'll sit, I'll talk with Jeff and we will come yeah. up with a... because he's already done the purchase that, of the bridge <laughs> portion. Correct. There is just, the, there the is... R, this is just an estimate for what the RFP is going to cost. Correct. Total cost correct. Not the total cost of the bridge and the whole right. nine yards, just what you're, what you're going out to bid for. You yeah. should have already a, a number in your on paper that's saying it's going to cost, we'll say, $200,000 for easy math. Right. Yeah, and the bids come in at, you know, <coughs> 175, 225, Jeff, 180. Jeff, Jeff has given yeah. us a ballpark what it would cost to rent, but the thing is a very rough estimate. Yeah. Looking at just rental of equipment. Well, you're talking about an engineer inspector, that's that's also what an engineer would do is put right. together an estimate of that nature. Um, you know, so you have a, a good, because that's when I do my fuel sites, we get an estimate you, for that. You want to just, uh, based on that, maybe ask our engineer, our road engineer. Yeah, if what, you could provide us with a... What we should be looking at. What we what would be an estimate? Give them the RFP and say, what, what, what's it going to cost us? Right. You know. Ballpark. I, yeah. uh, okay. I disagree with that. Okay. And I'm going to tell you my reason why. It's the same reason why when you hire an architect to design a building uh, within the town, they typically cover their butts with it. And so... You always have a higher cost than is going to come out in the end anyway, and uh, I don't find that it's. This number is just provided. strictly. This number is just strictly for you guys as a gauge to see what when the, the bids come in, if yeah. they're if they're reasonable. That's all it's for. And I know I know exactly what the number is that you're looking for, but I figure with the three estimates we're going to have a, a better gauge of that, and they're going to be actual estimates, not somebody's okay. an engineer's guess. In other words, an engineer can inspect that bridge, but he might not know the cost to actually build it. I'd be surprised. <laughs> so the DOT doesn't for a I think once we get our estimates, if there's too big a range between them, maybe we'll, you know, look at that issue. I usually, when and whether they're buildings or bridges or road work, usually an engineer has given them. And actually, it becomes depending on the size of the project. They'll get mechanical engineers to do the mechanics yep. or whatever, but they usually have what the project should cost you, and sometimes they'll come out over, sometimes under. Mm -hmm. You see them in the paper where a uh, city didn't go with a certain building only because mm -hmm. all of, well, the state prison, yep. the women's prison, came yep. out over bid. Yep. You know, because they, uh, the numbers... I do them every are, day, and I don't think their numbers make any sense well, at all. Well, the thing is, if, if the numbers are all over the place when they come in, mm -hmm. then we can just probably reconsider it. And Those estimated numbers to build buildings, they almost never hit the, you know, the number. And my point, though, Brian, was we have the bridge made, and it's included mm -hmm. in the RFP, but the cost of mm -hmm. going Stalling. that whole project, Setting utilizing it. even the bridge that we're providing, yeah. you know, what it should come out to mm -hmm. is is what, you know, you want to try to get some kind of an idea of what the number is. Because, I mean, the bridge now is, what, 77000 Yep. Yep. Just that's just for the concrete, right? Well, it is for anything that's led up to the, the final of the bridge. The engineering, yes. the engineering yes. is yes. precast. Yes. Yes. Yep. Those permits are only good for so long, so. Right, right. <coughs> okay, uh, so noted. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think, is I, I think we can wait to see. Uh, and then the thing is, use it as an option. If, if there are way out of. We'll I know for somebody to price that's going to be, you know, not a small amount of money, but the amount of work that they're going to have to put in that Probably. course. Substantial, yeah. and so then we're going to add costs to the bridge instead of looking at the three numbers and trying to make a good determination. If the if the numbers are spread, well, more than one three numbers to tell you. Too. Well, yeah. I'm just yeah. saying, maybe our top three yeah. picks or whatever. You know, if they're spread too far, then we might need to look at that. We look at it again. Yeah. Okay, anything else, Brian? No, okay, Linda, right. you're here. Anything for the group? Uh, the only thing I had <coughs> was that Nalt already brought up, and that was the passing of. Uh, Catherine Bellavo, Auntie K. Yeah. Our Boston Post came yeah. Linda, do you help with the um, age of the oldest person in town when Allison looks at that normally? Or she, yeah, she will ask me. She will ask you. We just want to verify that, make sure it still exists as. Uh, I don't you. think Mrs. Crosby got any younger. No, but the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody get any Allison older? Allison asked me last time. <laughs> um, no, well, 
nobody's asked me yet this time, but based on the criteria, that having to be a resident for yeah. X number of years, yeah. okay. I can't imagine that I don't know of anybody. Yeah. That's okay. I think that's town. what the threshold was. You had to be, be a resident, resident for X number of years. Yeah. Right. Six years or something. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. So uh, unless there's somebody so we who's can't have these upstarts come in and take living over. Living with mm -hmm. somebody that you know we just don't know about. Mm -hmm. Or somebody just gained a year to their credit. Mm -hmm. Meaning, mm -hmm. no, but I mean, if, if they had, if the criteria was you had to live here for six oh, years, right. last they, year they didn't make it because it was five years. Mm -hmm. This year they could have six years, they could be the oldest. Could be. That's true. Yeah, so that's needed to be, that's what I'm saying. That's point, no, point taken. So that would be a, a want to, Don't want to make a mistake there, right? No, right. no, it's embarrassing to make a mistake. Yeah. Exactly. Well, imagine trying to get it back from Marion. <laughs> no, it's not right. <laughs> After put the we to go through okay. the whole process. We'll go through the whole process. We talked to Alice and she said she was going to check in with Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, 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 we will okay. review it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, Alice. Okay. 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 Be nice. Be nice. Yeah, I don't no, imagine I the process will be nearly as tedious. So, we'll turn that over there. I don't care. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to bring back to the board. I'm going to start with uh, Bob over here first. Anything well, yeah, actually, maybe my question got answered because I was going to ask if they had made arrangements with Mitchie to hold the precast there I, I and believe, how long they could hold it. You know, right? I think Jeff said at the time that he spoke to the board, there was an arrangement for yeah. them, and it was yeah. not a problem. The issue was the length of time. That yeah, it was kind of willing. a short-term thing yeah. for yeah, short term, yeah. So right. Hopefully we can. So I guess that's what I was looking at. Is yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. No. Okay. No, I think a lot of my stuff was about score construction. It got answered as we went through the lane. Okay. And I'm going to go to town minister. I'm all set. Recording secretary, do you have anything for the group? Um, Did we talk fast enough? Yeah. I can have that. That whole audience could make a big difference. Okay. Today. Very good. Uh, do I have a motion, gentlemen? I move to adjourn the meeting. And uh, we are definitely postponing next week. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I think one of the biggest things is getting us those landscape numbers so we can yeah. get that voted on. Okay. So send our thumbs up and, or down. And, and then I will send you, do you have a minute? I'll print off those yep. um, questions, questionnaires. Yeah. That way if you have anything to add. Yep. And then I'll try to schedule the third one. I don't think it's going to be a problem because he seemed very upbeat when I talked to him. I got to come down and sign stuff anyway, so I'll. Oh, yeah. no? Okay, good. All right, Bob, you made the motion. What's the time? 824. Really? Yeah, I'm going to start the second. I am. Okay, because I was just talking to our part. You guys were still talking that part of the motion, so I was going to send something to me because I sent them an email. Um, I don't know if you sent that. She just asked why, you know, I just want to join her poll. I don't know if you want to talk about now or tomorrow.